Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful Democratic guests. Today we're joined by Evan Lowe, who one day will be governor. Evan, not to uh, predict the future, but I think I'm, I think I'm right. You're a silly man, but it's always good to be hopeful. Yes, <laughs> keep hope alive. Absolutely. So, Evan, you are now on the uh, city council in Campbell. You've served as mayor several times. Um, you are uh, an unusual person, and I think you're the youngest elected official in the country, uh, or at least was at some point. Okay, that may not be exactly right, but um, uh, l let's get to know you a little bit. You grew up in, in Campbell, and... Well, uh, thanks, Steve. Um, I'm a fourth generation Californian, and I grew up in San Jose, born and raised oh. in San Jose. Uh, my father's uh, an optometrist, and uh, my background is I'm a Chinese American, and he always believed in just giving back in his community. He was good at science, but he always believed that you can always give back, and so he did flying doctors, in which he mm. flies to impoverished places throughout uh, various parts of the world to give out free eye care to individuals. But he was also active in his chamber of commerce. He's act active in his service clubs, like the Lions Club. And so just growing up, I was remembered uh, participating in doing community service. It was just something that we did. It was just part of the way of life. And uh, that's how I got my uh, start and roots in public service. It was just something that you just did. It was just the average thing that you did on a weekend and uh, after school. Well, I have met your father, Arthur, and he's a, um, he's a good man. He, he certainly is very passionate and what he believes in. And so uh, when I, people say to him, you should think about running for office because you were so active in the community, he says, no, I'm way too opinionated and uh, don't mind my P's and Q's so much. Uh, but nonetheless, he's certainly a passionate individual, and I think that's something that I aspire to, and he's a role, certainly a role model for me. Yeah, cool. So you went to local schools and uh, graduated from college and... Uh, you know, again, at some point you ran for the city council when most people are thinking, you know, do I need to get a paper route or? Sure. Uh, yeah, I went to Almaden. Uh, I grew up in Almaden Valley and I went to Leland High School, uh, transferred and went to De Anza Community College. Uh, it was the best experience of my life. Community college, you meet different people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I took a class in uh, political science and Asian American studies and it just opened up my mind. Um, but in terms of Asian culture, actually, um, I was told that I should become a doctor, lawyer, or an engineer, or even an accountant, because those were very good-paying jobs, and you didn't ruffle too many feathers, and it was stable. We looked for stability. In the Asian culture, that's something that we really focus on. And so going the route of public service in politics is something that our family really had no experience in, uh, but yet they see the importance and the value that it provides. Uh, and so I, when I looked at my community after uh, graduating from, then from San Jose State, mm -hmm. I took a class from a gentleman that many people also knew, Terry Christensen, uh, very iconic in this valley, in this region. Uh, but he said, you should think about potentially doing uh, po the political realm. And so I just felt it was an extension of public service. Didn't quite know what I was getting myself into, um, but I just knew that it was important to give back in some way or fashion. So, not too far after graduating, uh, you did run for city council. I did. Uh, I also, at De Anza Community College, I took a class by a gentleman by the name of Michael Chang. And he was the first Asian American mayor of the city of Cupertino yeah. at the time. And he had taken me to a number of council meetings and he said, come to this council meeting, come to these fundraisers, would you volunteer on this campaign? And before you know it, you sort of get hooked in it. And someone says, well, let's continue to get you involved in more activities. And so he said, think about your community. What would you like to contribute? How can you get involved? And thus, uh, that was my foray into the city of Campbell, in which uh, I ran for the city council at the age of 21 at the time. I wasn't successful the first time, and I lost. Uh, lost by about 1%, um, but just two years later, ran again and was successful uh, when I was 23 years old. 23. Now, uh, Professor Chang had a class, uh, an institute at De Anza College. Uh, did you go through that uh, at early years? And Absolutely. Uh, not only did he teach, but there was a special program um, 
that focuses on leadership. It's a leadership institute that really gets individuals engaged in civic participation. Fundamentally, I think many of us are exposed to the basic fundamentals, but what does it mean to get involved and what is our role in our society? Particularly in Silicon Valley, we work very long hours and try to put food on the table. Uh, but then again, what can we do in our communities to sort of give back and uh, reinvest uh, and give back to finding out ways that we can create an environment in which other people can thrive as well? Um, and so I learned some of those skills. And it frankly wasn't something that uh, was something that I just grew up knowing that that was part of what we did. Um, but it was a learned activity, which I think is important because you see the importance of why is it in it, the engagement aspect. Uh, why is it important that communities get involved in politics? And when you talk about government and politics, that's sort of like a dirty word. What are the things that we don't talk about at the dinner table? What are the things that we mm. don't talk about during Thanksgiving? You certainly don't talk about politics and government, so this divides so many people. Uh, but once you're in it, you see the importance and the value that it brings. Well, my question is, when you think about, when I think about politics and government and uh, rights and uh, people being treated fairly and all that. I don't think of the city council of a, a non-large city. Was that tactful? <laughs> well, let me just say that when you represent a city, uh, your fundamental purpose is to s look out for the best interest of all residents within your community. And being that uh, role model and being a steward of the public trust is very important. And when dealing with public taxpayer dollars and the confidence and the trust, it's important. Yes, the fundamental services on the municipal level uh, are items related to non-sexy issues uh, like sanitation, mm -hmm. a solid waste, um, yeah. potholes, infrastructure, streets, uh, utilities. Those are the fundamentals, public safety. Uh, but again, it's a more of a greater role, a greater calling of representative government, which is also important. And so that's why it's important that we have a diverse pool of individuals that reflect our society, not just for empty tokenism to say that we just have diversity for diversity's sake, but what is the true meaningful value that each individual brings with their depth of their experience and the background? I don't think you could have empty tokenism if you're on a city council without getting called out because I know you get thick packets of uh, issues to study and they're all the areas that you talked about and they are very basic things, but you have to know it and it's, um, it's a challenge because it's not a full-time job. It's not something you're paid to do. You do it, quote, on your own time, but you damn well better do it or you're not going to get... Uh, supported uh, you know in future uh, runs for office it's certainly a labor of love <clears throat> and where else can you be in our society where you get together a number of individuals with different uh, life backgrounds philosophical backgrounds uh, their experiences are all different uh, but we're all out to look for the common interest of the general public and in my case that is the city of Campbell and so what does that look like when you have different people from different generations, millennials dealing with Generation X and Y, and how do we see things differently when it relates to technology or even the issue of affordable housing? My generation uh, will not be able to afford mm. uh, uh, the type of housing in our communities, whereas previous generations were able to afford on the average income that the individuals worked on. And so what does that look like? What does transportation look like? Uh, public transportation look like? If you come from different ethnic backgrounds, what does public safety look like in terms of the needs and being able to feel like they can access their services accordingly as well? So again, it's important that we uh, have a breadth of experience and different individuals with different backgrounds to then provide for the diversity that uh, we enjoy in our communities. So you uh, became a council member at the age of 23. Your colleagues, uh, I would venture to say, were probably at least twice your age. Um, I'm not going to say three times your age and ask you to acknowledge that, but let's just say you were the youngest by far. Uh, how well were you received, and uh, did people think you had something to prove? In retrospect, you, know, you sort of take a look at, at, at it back now and you say, why were individuals so harsh on me? And then you sort of fast forward and then you realize as you get older that, oh, okay, I sort of see that there was something to it that they also had made mention of. 
Uh, when I ran at the age of uh, 21 mm -hmm. and or 23 respectively, uh, frankly, I still looked like I was out of high school. Uh, and they didn't quite know and, uh, what I was all about. Uh, what were his values? What does he really care about? Is this a stepping stone? And the challenge also was that individuals equated age uh, with experience, whereas I argued that it's about the judgment calls. Uh, you can be an uh, individual long on this earth, but if you make the wrong judgment calls, uh, that's fundamentally what it's about. And so when knocking on doors and talking to individuals, I had people say, well, Evan, I have shirts and ties that are older than you. <laughs> and I said, wow, you have clothes that still you wear that's over 20 years old. That's um, quite, quite a longevity, for amount of longevity for your uh, wardrobe. Uh, but in any case, um, individuals didn't really feel that young people had something to offer. Um, and so I think to demonstrate the abilities that it's a, f a breath of fresh air, and that we are doing our homework, it's very important. Now in the city of Campbell, actually, I was the second youngest oh. to be elected in the city's history. A gentleman by the name of Rusty Hammer was elected at the age of 18 mm. in 1972, and he was the youngest mayor and council member in the city in the history of the United States oh. at that time. Uh, he later on became the president of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. Oh. Uh, but if you look at individuals and young people throughout the country now, you have members of Congress that are serving uh, in the House of Representatives that are under 30 years old. And in the state legislature here in California, uh, there are members of the state legislature that are under the age of 30. Mm. So there's a, uh, currently two members of the legislature, one is 26 and one is 29. Mm. And so uh, certainly when you talk about the importance of legislation affecting the uh, eighth largest economy in the world, if California was its own country, mm -hmm. uh, certainly young people have much to offer. And you're involved in uh, a lot of other organizations that uh, are filled with young people. I know young Democrats and all that. Uh, it must be helpful for them to see someone who has been willing to step up and, and uh, enter the, the fray. I think aspirational leadership is very important. And we talked about myself growing up. I didn't necessarily, if you asked me who is your political role model, uh, I wouldn't necessarily be able to highlight someone other than my father, for example. And so when we talk about individuals in the respective realms of whatever it might be, politics, uh, whether it be in high tech or sports, I think it's important that we demonstrate that there are role models so that we can inspire not only the future generations, but the current generations, and particularly for young people, the energy and passion to think differently. Yeah. And particularly in Silicon Valley, we know that we think differently, and there are millennials that are creating yeah. uh, multi-million, billion-dollar companies. Yeah, great. We're going to take a little break uh, when we come back. More from Evan Lowe. Hi, I'm Santa Clara County Supervisor Dave Cortezzi, and one of the things that people ask me all the time is, how can I get involved? How can I make a difference? I have people contact me, constituents, who say, I'm ready to be involved more with my community. What do you recommend? Well, one of the things I would recommend is getting involved with the local Democratic Party. Uh, it's not only something that you can and should do as a Democrat, but it can be something very inspiring. Um, this is the party uh, that stands up for people most in need, and they can certainly use your help. As an elected official, I know that. As a de Democratic activist in my own right, um, I know that you can make a difference by being involved by being involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with our local Democratic Party. Want to know how to contact them? Do it by phone, 408-445-9500. Or go to their website, www.sccdp.org. Your local Democratic Party, a great place to get involved. Welcome back to Democratic Television and our guest, Evan Lowe. Evan, thanks for uh, staying through the break. Absolutely. Um, when we were uh, uh, talking earlier, we were talking about um, sort of the importance of local government, municipal government, and uh, the fact that many people have become cynical about the ability of government to provide for people's needs, uh, for them to be taxed fairly, uh, and for them to have a sense of optimism about the future, not just in terms of government working, but the economy and everything else. So. What say you to people uh, of cynical 
uh, inclinations? Well, certainly in this soundbite generation in which we just come to the conclusions based upon what we read or, or the blogosphere, uh, it's important that we think about the fundamentals of the basics. So why is it that government is slow? Our founding fathers and democracy was set up in a certain way of checks and balances. And we understand that there's a legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch checking each other. It's important to then say, we understand that everyone has an equal voice. And having said that, that is the system of government that we have. Now, when we talk about the local level, all politics is local, I think people are complacent about the value that government provides. You know, when we turn on that water faucet, we expect clean, drinkable, plentiful water. And in other parts of the world, we don't have that. Uh, when you turn on the light switch, we expect the light to be on forever. Uh, and when we flush the toilets, you know, the issue of sanitation, we expect it to just disappear and clean water comes right back. Well, where does that go? Or when we take out our garbage, it just magically disappears. And someone's going to just make sure that the landfills are, are plentiful land and that it's going to be reduced and recycled and all of those different issues. But again, I think we need to demonstrate the appreciation, and that is the fundamental role and process that I think is important for government officials to be able to reinvest and talk about the true value of government. Because when we get past the sound bites and the yard drilling, and then we take a look at the everyday lives, you think about how is government involved in my day to day lives? And just think about it, and you see government everywhere. That's so interesting because when do people come to? city council meetings when they're angry, when they're upset, when they think that you guys are uh, going astray. But 99% of the time, you're taking care of business. Absolutely. Or even think about the other individuals that we might not see. So individuals that need social services, or individuals in uh, the criminal justice system, or even the courts. Um, those are the type of things that are very important. Whereas you, read the, you open up the paper and you look at international news, for example, there is not access to clean, drinkable water. People will be persecuted, go to jail, or even killed for demonstrating their own beliefs. Think about how fortunate we are in the society that we live in. And so that's why it's important that we continue to reinvest in the trust and make sure that all generations, young people in particular, understand that we can't take things for granted and that generations before us have worked very hard and came through the struggles to provide the atmosphere for us to thrive today. So let me um, take everything you just said and uh, recognize that you are now running for the state assembly. You're running for the 28th assembly district. Uh, the Democratic Party has endorsed you in your race. Um, why the state assembly? Sure. Well, it's uh, going from the city of Campbell, where we're 40,000 people, going to then the state legislature. The district is almost about half a million people. Uh, and so representing San Jose and the West Valley cities of Campbell, Cupertino, Montesoreno, Los Gatos, and Saratoga, tremendous talent and a tremendous opportunity. And understanding that we are the eighth largest economy in the world, uh, it's important that we are focused on the approach of making sure that Silicon Valley is represented accordingly in Sacramento, but that we're also doing the right things related to policy issues so that we know it's a good return on investment. And that's why I want to pursue and participate in this process. Uh, I teach government. I teach political science at uh, De Anza College. And so understanding the fundamentals of the issues of how government is set up, it's important that I uh, practice what I preach. So tell me again uh, about how your community reacts to uh, your, I think, enthusiastic and an intelligent approach to uh, making our uh, government our uh, system of values as government uh, shows them work? Well, I think it is refreshing to a lot of people uh, when uh, many people I talk to and I say I'm running for the state legislature, for example, and they say, well, here's a problem with the state and you can insert any single issue that under the sun that there's a problem with. But again, I think unless we ourselves uh, try to participate in the public process, uh, and be part of the solutions uh, and bringing people together. I think fundamentally that's to the core beliefs of what our democracy is all about. Um, my family, as I mentioned, fourth generations of Californians, uh, we have, uh, each generation has come to this uh, world 
trying to make the world a better place for themselves and for the families. And so I'm a beneficiary of the work and the struggles that previous generations have um, participated in. And so it's important that we continue to uh, make the world a better place and try to adapt and enhance to provide what we know is going to be a good, sound public policy for generations to come. Now we know that it's not all just hammering out good public policy, but there's constituent work and other uh, activities that go on in the legislature. Um, your background is, is such that you've had experience in this. You work for other elected officials. That's right. As I mentioned, I teach uh, political science at a community college. Uh, I have served on the city council in the city of Campbell. I also worked as a legislative aide for then Senator Elaine Alquist. Uh, and most recently serving as the district director for assembly member Paul Fong. And so as a legislative staff member, you sort of see the day-to-day -day, uh, nuts and bolts of how the legislative process works, but also constituent services, uh, which I think is an important aspect to equip then the elected official to know what staff, is, what was required of staff, uh, and have the realistic expectations to be able to serve the constituencies that you represent. Um, but it's truly an honor and a wonderful experience. So uh, what are your uh, aspirations? You, because of uh, the change in term limits, potentially could be in the state assembly for 12 years, which is um, longer than it had been. Um, I somewhat jokingly called you a potential governor, but let's say I'm not joking. Well, I certainly appreciate uh, the work that I'm doing, and uh, when sort of assessing the next step, uh, you sort of then ask yourself, can I be of added value, or can someone do a better job than myself? And if that is the case, why not let that other person go ahead? But what I think is important is that we expand the pool of other individuals so that it's not just about me and that we can continue to have other people running for office, other young people, other people from different generations, from different sexual backgrounds, uh, from different genders. I think that's the diversity and the strength that brings uh, us to where we are today. And so I hope to just be a convener and an opportunity to continue that conversation and dialogue to inspire other individuals to participate in the public process. Do you feel that you're a role model? As you walk down the street, do you realize you're probably in a fishbowl uh, because of your uh, unique backgrounds? Well, let me just say that, you know, uh, as it relates to policy issues, as uh, the mayor of Campbell, I was uh, able to host the Boy Scouts uh, to earn the merit badge. And one of the Boy Scout Scouts, were you also a Boy Scout? Is that how you became mayor? And I had to sort of pause because uh, as someone who was openly gay, at the time we couldn't serve and be part of the Boy Scouts. Uh, I could officially marry two people, but I couldn't get married myself. Uh, I could host a blood drive on City Hall property, uh, but I cannot do it in blood myself. Uh, there are certain policies that are discriminatory towards members of the LGBT community. And so standing up for the rights of all people I think is important, thus bringing light to the issue, which is important. And so I hope that I can play a small role in helping to shape policy and demonstrating the value of the diverse communities. Well, I think that's very refreshing. Um, you will also be making major uh, decisions about uh, spending the state's resources. Uh, there are, are, are funding for uh, high-speed rail, for water projects. How do you see yourself making decisions about what to do there? Uh, who do you include in a process such as that? Certainly those are big issues at hand, and particularly in Silicon Valley, there are many different stakeholders that are involved and engaged in that. What I think is important is you sort of take a step back, and certainly I think everyone has a gut reaction or gut opinion on whatever issue uh, that might come before them. But I think it's important is that you look at the various stakeholders that are involved, finding out uh, the pros and cons, who would be against and who would be in support, and trying to find common solutions uh, because at the end of the day, when you talk about Democrats versus Republicans, fundamentally we're all, for example, Californians. Mm -hmm. And I think we look out for the best interests of all of Californians. And what does that look like? So it's just about how do we get there from point A to point B. Um, but again, going down to basics about developing that level of trust uh, with each other and having that respect. So trust and respect fundamentally uh, are important to be able to have. And if you don't have that, then the conversation is sort of moot. Uh, from that from that aspect. Yeah, well, I think that's a great way to uh, proceed. So we have about two minutes left. Um, 
if somebody is interested in either working on your campaign or sharing their views of uh, the policy issues that you should be looking at, do you have a website or a way for people to contact you? Sure. Uh, the website is uh, evanlow.com. Uh, there is also Facebook, uh, which is uh, facebook.com backslash evanlow. Uh, they can go, individuals can go on Twitter or Instagram or any social media aspect uh, to volunteer. And uh, there's an opportunity to provide their expertise. If you like to volunteer your time on phone banking or knocking on doors, there's that opportunity. If you like uh, phone banking, there's that opportunity as well. Or if you do have a policy issues, I'm uh, more than happy to understand uh, the perspectives so that we can help uh, shape Silicon Valley in Sacramento. So we have about a minute left. What would you say to a young person watching the show who's going, I don't know if, I, if it really matters to me. I don't know if I should step up. Uh, it clearly has mattered to you. What are you going to say to them? Well, th the key aspects uh, that I'd say is, what is your role in our society? And how can you give back and make this place a better place than you found it? It sounds sort of cliche, but what is my role in society in helping to make it a better place? And uh, be passionate about what you do. So not necessarily politics, but if you're passionate in uh, government, you can do that. If you're a doctor, you can do uh, work at a clinic. If you're a lawyer, pro bono work teacher, you can mentor. So there are many different aspects in which we can all play a role. Well, great. It sounds like the uh, son of Arthur Lowe is uh, doing well, and we have a lot to look forward to. So thank you very much for being on Democratic Television, and um, we'll look forward to watching your career. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching Democratic Television. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 or visit our website, www.sccdp.org, and help make a difference. We'll see you on the campaign trail. Thanks a lot. Good night.